Foster of Galair, what's the crack? This is my third video on a three part series about heat and the athlete and how we can, I suppose, improve performance, how heat affects our performance. And these were done basically because the World Cup is on and it's very, very hot over there. So, yes, that definitely doesn't have an impact on performance. What I'm going to talk about now is how we can best improve performance in the heat. So, what strategy should we implement? The number one strategy is pre-cooling. So this is reducing core body temperature. If we remember from one of our other videos just here, we know that when our body hits a certain level, it begins to shut down and reduces performance. So when our body overheats, our core body temperature goes too high, it shuts down and performance is reduced. So what we try to do with that is create more of what's called a sink. So we want... When we're going from here to here, we want that distance to be further, so it takes longer for our body to reach that critical point of re a reduction in performance. So when our body temperature is in around 38 degrees Celsius, we're fine, our performance won't be hindered by the heat, but when we hit up here in around 40 degrees Celsius, performance begins to be hindered. So that time between this point and this point is what we want to increase. So we want to bring this temperature, 38 degrees Celsius, down lower, so that we'll have a greater length of time within this optimal performance zone. So we do that with pre-cooling. There's a couple of different methods of pre-cooling. First we'll talk about ice baths, okay, so just basically submerging yourself in ice before a game. Uh, generally it's recommended that you do this slowly, so you might start off with um, something that's similar to skin temperature and then gradually reduce the heat. You don't really want the athlete to be in there and shivering and shaking before a game. You want to try and reduce it slowly. Typically you'll see, I mean you won't see any greater than a one degree Celsius drop in core body temperature. But when they have seen, for example, point, I think 0.7 degrees Celsius was the drop in one of the studies. As a result of that area core temperature, which was 0.7 degrees Celsius lower, they saw an improvement uh, in performance, a slight improvement of, I mean, you're talking improvements of 1 or 2% in performance. Okay, so that's ice baths. In terms of their practicality, I mean, you'd have to be in the ice bath for maybe like a half an hour beforehand to allow your body slowly cool. It definitely has to be a longer period rather than a shorter period because with a shorter period, you're only really going to cool the skin. So you need to be in the ice for a longer period of time to allow your core body temperature to drop because that's the important one, the core body temperature. So it definitely has to be a longer period of time. Spending a half an hour in an ice bath, then getting out, then putting on your gear, then doing your warm up. You know, I mean, the practicalities of that are very slim in terms of you know if we're applying it to soccer. So what else can we look at? There's other things like um, packs that you maybe wrap wrap around your neck. So a nice pack that you wrap around your neck, or what we see, what I saw actually the other night with the Dutch team wearing ice jackets. So they were just cooling vests. So literally, it's just a vest that you put over you, and it's just cool. There's either ice in it. Um, or there's water in it and that's sp designed to cool your body temperature again they've shown that that has slightly helped to improve performance and it's a lot more practical if you have let's say a professional sports team who want to use that at half time or at uh, during extra time so in the Dutch match the other night they all had the um, those black jackets on to cool their body's temperature Okay, so the next one then, and probably one of the bigger ones, is slushies. So like crushed ice or a crushed ice slush, slushy, and drinking that before the game. So there's a couple of different things that happen with that. Obviously it goes down into your system and it helps cool your body. They've done comparisons between eating, or sorry, drinking a slushy, so an iced drink versus a, just a regular temperature drink. And they found that it actually has shown really good improvements I think it was a 19% improvement in a distance run for runners. So a 19% improvement is huge. And they also found something very interesting in that the core body temperature of the players who took the slushy was actually higher after the exercise finished or at peak exercise. So basically what they propose is that when you take in the slushy, either the slushy cool the arteries uh, here which lead to the brain and as a result when these arteries were cooler the brain got cooler it allowed the body's maximum critical point to be a little bit higher 
and as a result help improve performance. So they postulate that that's because the brain was actually cooler and sensed that the body was cooler and thus the critical point was a little bit higher. Okay, so that's the slushy thing. They have done other studies where they've combined a couple of different things and really the most practical one would be taking the slushy, so your ice slushy even, or you know, at half time even as well if it's really warm, uh, before a game or before your bout of exercise when you're out in the heat, and also the ice pack on the neck as well was shown to be kind of the, the most effective and practical. When you compare those to submerging yourself in an ice bath and using the jackets, you get the exact same results, but again, they're not as practical. Okay, so again, Pre-cooling is definitely number one for performing in, in the heat. Another really good tip for pre-cooling or for keeping your body cool is actually covering yourself in water. So if you cover your jersey in, in water and if you do it every time, for example, if someone runs onto the pitch, grab the water, cover your top and your back in water. And what that will do is that will help you sweat and help your, or sorry, won't help, it's help your sweat dissipate off your body and help heat dissipate after your body so it'll create a greater gradient there and you'll actually feel it for example if it's windy and it's really warm you'll actually feel it's quite cool when the wind blows any if your t-shirt is wet versus if it's dry so that's another really good tip to keep your core body temperature and i use that one all the time if i'm playing in the heat um yeah that's pretty much it click on the video down here for more on this graph and why performance is hindered in the heat there's also a video over here that we're going to talk about uh, which is on heat again and the athlete and what happens in the body when, when we're exercising in heat and if you do like the videos please do subscribe Portaglach in Abroad August Brishtagevla